James here at Jara Shot. I've got the Nexon Storm in my horror DVD collection reviews for you here now. And first up, we've got a Lucio Fulci movie from 1980, City of the Living Dead, also known as Gates of Hell. The next film after Zombie 2. It's also part of his unofficial zombie trilogy. It includes this movie, City of the Living Dead, House by the Cemetery and The Beyond, both from 1981. They both have a similar theme in the storyline whereby it's got a backdrop. Uh, to do with hell. All three of these movies have that in common. It's kind of based around a H.P. Lovecraft kind of storyline. This parish priest in a, in a town called Dunwich kills and hangs himself and this opens up the gates to hell. All these living dead start to rise up. It starts to involve a reporter played by Christopher George, a, a psychic uh, played by Catriona McColl. She has a vision of these uh, dead waking up. They basically set off there together to set things straight and see what's going on. One of his best films out there, in my opinion. It's got a great cast. We've got Christopher George, who's in uh, Graduation Day, Grizzly, Pieces, Catriona McColl, who's in a lot of Fulci films, two ones that I mentioned before, The Beyond and House by the Cemetery. We've also got Giovanni Lamberto Radis, who's an Italian uh, horror film stalwart. He's in a lot of films, and he always seems to get a really bad death. This movie's probably the best example of that, where he gets his head drilled by a jealous father, now, uh, this movie has got all your Fulci trademarks in there. It's got great atmosphere, which he's very good at, very dark and oppressive. It's also got a very kind of downbeat feel to it, particularly the ending or the climax. We've also got a lot of gore and blood. Probably some of his uh, most memorable efforts in this one. Of course, I mentioned the head drilling scene. We've also got uh, a scene where a young woman vomits up her, her intestines, blood all coming down and yeah, viscera coming out of mouth and very memorable again. We've got uh, disemboweling and all that kind of thing. Also, the zombies in this film, the title's kind of uh, leading you away from the fact that there's not really many zombies in this. They're very different to the particular Walking Dead in uh, something like Dawn of the Dead. These ones have a more supernatural element to them and they can kind of disappear and reappear behind you and all that kind of thing. So it adds an extra element of fear to it. So yeah, a very, very good movie. All your Fulci stuff in there, great uh, gore, great atmosphere. Uh, the story is serviceable too, and uh, yeah, just a really cool movie, and I'd highly recommend City of the Living Dead. Next up, we've got a George A. Romero movie, but this one's kind of one of his more lesser-known movies, overshadowed in his career compared to some of the bigger names, but I still think it's a really great example of his directorial powers. Objectively speaking, I think it's one of his best. It's from 1972 and it's The Crazies, also known as Trixie. This one is actually very similar to uh, Dawn of the Dead, which would be unleashed on us in 1979, a few years later. Same kind of kinetic energy to it, uh, fast edits, uh, strange camera angles. We're also following around a group which is trying to outrun a force. So if you've seen that movie, you're going to feel very at home watching this one. It's kind of the same thing. In this one, the backstory is there's a, an experimental military weapon, a germ weapon called Trixie and it's unwittingly unleashed into the water supply of a small town and when it's ingested it makes the people crazy and insane so you could say that uh, it is very very similar to Dawn of the Dead in this we've got a group that's trying to outrun the people at the same time trying to get away from the people that aren't infected because they're just as dangerous in a way so yeah, very similar to Dawn of the Dead, and it's a great precursor to that movie. We've also got a really nice cult cast in it. We've got Lynn Lowry from I Drink Your Blood, which again is a very similar movie, because in that film, it's a band of hippies which uh, give this small community LSD-laced meat pies, and same kind of thing. When, they, when, when they're eaten, it makes them turn into crazed people. So yeah, very, very cool movie. Great writing, great script, as with a lot of George A. Romero movies, it's got a lot of political overtones to it. Intelligent and witty and a lot of black humour. Great dialogue, very fast and frenzied. Stabs at society and the bureaucrats and all that kind of thing. So, really good film. The storyline is kind of a cautionary tale in a way because the town is under martial law. It's kind of stormtrooper-esque soldiers in hazmat suits come in and cordon it off oppressing the people, keeping them locked up. So yeah, kind of a cautionary tale and uh, a very, very good one at that. So if you haven't seen The Crazies, go and check it out because uh, yeah, I think it's one of Romero's best. So The Crazies. 
Next up, we've got another George A. Romero movie, and everyone should be pretty familiar with this one. Everybody likes this film. It's very well respected, and it's got a lot of nostalgic memories attached to it. And it's uh, Creep Show from 1982. This one's an anthology movie based off some Stephen King short story. What makes this one maybe a bit more interesting is it's kind of overlaid with a comic book style. To introduce movie segments, we've got some comic book artwork which transforms into the actual picture. At the end of those segments, we've also got the same kind of thing and throughout the movie sometimes turns into a comic book cell where they're framed inside it so it looks really really cool and inventive and creative and there's a lot of humor in this one it's very very fun it's more light and uh, enjoyable very fun movie i don't think anyone out there wouldn't like creep show in this one we've got five stories the first one is called father's day it's about an abusive older father that everybody hated and he's died the family's gathering together and uh, on this day he comes back from the grave because he wants some birthday cake next up we've got the lonesome death of geordie verrill which stars stephen king the writer and it's basically about a bumpkin farmer who finds this comet that lands in his field and he thinks he's going to be rich but as he touches it he gets this uh, fungus spread all over him and it basically consumes him the third one is called Something to Tide You Over, which stars Leslie Nielsen and Ted Danson. A jealous husband who finds out his wife's having an affair, captures the, the boyfriend and the wife and buries them head in the sand and makes them die basically, letting the tide kill them and they come back after him. Fourth one is probably my favourite. Uh, it's got Hal Holbrook in there and Adrian Barbeau playing Billy. Great, great segment to the film. Very, very funny. It's about Hal Holbrook and he's sick of his wife because she's a nagging, abusive person. She doesn't shut up. In the back of his head, he always has thoughts of killing her. There's a very funny one where he shoots her and yeah, just a great segment. I mean, I'm smiling now because I'm thinking about it. It's a great, great segment. But anyway, he finds an old crate in a university where he's working and inside this crate is this weird beast thing and it's very, very vicious. So he hatches a plan with his friend to get his wife to come down there and get killed by it. So the last one is called The Creeping Up On You, which is about this rich older person and he lives in this sterilized apartment everything's all white and yeah all these bugs start infesting it these uh, cockroaches and he basically drowns alive in them so yeah it's a very very fun movie there's kind of a sixth story overlaid with that it's this kid that's reading this comic book and his father doesn't want him to read it and he throws it out in the trash and that's where all these stories are coming from so yeah, really fun movie, great direction by Ramiro. He's having a lot of fun in this one. Uh, really colourful and full of life and uh, really, really enjoyable. Great acting, the cast is superb. Definitely check this one out because, yeah, like uh, The Crazies, it's one of his best and it's Creepshow from 1982. Next up, we've got the sequel, Creep Show 2, and this one's from 1987. It's not directed by Romero this time, it's directed by Michael Gornick. He's a cinematographer for a lot of Romero movies, so that's a good sign. We've also got a screenplay by George Romero. The short stories were written by uh, Stephen King again, so on paper it sounds all very good. This one's three stories, though. We've got one called Old Chief Woodenhead. We've also got The Raft. The last one is called The Hitchhiker, I think. It's not as good as the first movie. It's not as fresh. The direction isn't as well done, but it's still a fun movie. I mean, if you like the first movie, you're gonna like the second movie. It's just not as good. So, uh, Creep Show 2 from 1987. Next up, we've got a movie that featured in my latest update, and it's Crawl Space from 1986, directed by David Schmoller. As you can see, it stars Klaus Kinski, and in this movie, he's doing what he does best, which is acting crazy, but uh, it totally, totally works, because that's what the movie uh, needed. The storyline for this one is very spoiler heavy, so if you haven't seen the movie, I'd switch off now. With this one, Klaus Kinski is the son of a, a Nazi war criminal. Klaus himself was doing illegal experiments on uh, unwitting people in uh, South America and he's basically fleed to America and he's now running a hotel or a boarding house. He exclusively lends out his room to women because he crawls around in the air ducts in the crawl spaces and spies on them. He's a voyeur. He also has murderous tendencies too. He has a very interesting routine before he commits an act or after he's committed an act, he plays Russian roulette with himself. In his mind, he's giving God the chance to stop him. 
and he holds the gun up to his head. If it doesn't kill him, God allowing him to continue what he's doing. He has a great line. He always says, uh, so be it in his uh, really cool accent. But uh, yeah, a really cool movie. The blood and gore is kind of light, but it's got a really interesting storyline. And when uh, Klaus blows up in this movie and starts going totally off the wall and crazy, it's kind of a, a whirlwind uh, performance. The direction is also really strong. It's got some tense moments in there. The voyeuristic moments where he's watching his victims are very well done, very creepy and um, unnerving. So yeah, just all around a very solid movie. Yeah, Crawl Space, recommend it. I hope you enjoyed my latest uh, horror DVD collection reviews and thank you for watching. Jarrah Sat out.